So there's currently quite a lot of negative articles, negative news regarding the RDX 50 series launch and uh, not without merit at all considering the prices, the launch prices currently, the black screen issues that have been reported, the burning issues that have been reported, some driver issues that have been reported and uh, missing ROPs as well. So this is going to be a little bit against the grain i'm going to actually do a little bit of a more positive video on it i know i know the comment section is going to be in video shell all over the place but i thought i actually want to make this video about multi-frame generation and the actual impact of input latency right so i'm just going to give you a little bit of an overview of what you see on the screen at the moment on the left we've got a uh, cap from x we've got some performance metrics etc i do have the frame time average there as well in red but i'll show you i'll explain that a little bit later and then on the right top the right hand corner we've got the pc latency as measured by the nvidia app right and currently we are getting around 70 ish frames per second with latency at around 33 milliseconds and if we go ahead and just show you the settings here currently so this is with an rdx 4080 and we do have a 7800 x3d cpu as well and 32 gigabytes of ddr5 6000 megatransfers per second cl30 memory and uh, these are the settings i just basically selected the the high preset right uh, it does say custom but i select the high preset uh, selected uh, dlss super resolution which then makes it custom and i selected the quality we do have the transformer model instead of the cnn model and i do have fast tracing enabled with a dlss raid reconstruction right so dlss quality 1440p path tracing enabled and uh, that's the wrong button we've got around 70 ish frames per second here with the uh, pc latency between 30 and 35 milliseconds right so if we go ahead and then just enable frame generation here we're going to go with 2x 3x and 4x and we will need to restart the game for the changes to take effect unfortunately but i'm going to apply the lss frame generation 2x i'm going to come back to this exact same spot all right so here we are currently with the dlss frame generation 2x enabled and we're getting between 110 and 120 frames per second here don't mind the one percent lows and the frame time graph this is the new updated frame generation and uh, the on-screen displays don't play well with it at all to actually measure accurate one percent and 0.1 percent lows you'll uh, the only way i could find it was to actually measure it off screen with the uh, cap frame x but uh, to actually export it into a graph but anyway so that's why i've got the frame time average there as well so you can see that it is sitting at 8.6 milliseconds and not the 0.3 milliseconds you see on the frame time graph but our pc latency increased slightly going from 30 35 milliseconds to around 40 45 milliseconds the game still feels perfectly fine this is basically how i play the game i do not mind 40 ish milliseconds input latency or pc latency at all so let's go ahead and actually see what a 3x can do for us all right so i'm just going to enable dlss uh, frame generation 3x here or mfg 3x I'm going to do everything live so let's go ahead and uh, reset our numbers and, and the one percent lows don't uh, matter at all but now you can see we are getting around 45 to 50 milliseconds input latency this is actually a very heavy area this is why i'm testing here it's uh, it's very heavy on the cpu and on the gpu but our input latency did not really increase that much previously it was uh, between 40 and 45 milliseconds with the lss 2x uh, frame generation now it's between 40 and 50 milliseconds so on the high end it increased slightly right so 170 ish frames per second here perfectly fine and this is on a 165 hertz panel so let's go ahead and enable 4x and then i want to show you what happens when you actually cap the frame rate so 4x just uh, exactly the same settings here let's see what kind of frame rates we get so that uh, takes us from around 170 frames per second to around 210 frames per second and our pc latency is still sitting between 40 and 50 milliseconds right so it's definitely not increasing at all between 2x and 4x or well from 3x to 4x there was no increase and uh, 2x to 3x there was a slight increase and the game still feels perfectly fine now i just want to say that sure if i now go and pause the video zoom in 500 percent slow it down by a thousand percent i'm going to start seeing artifacts right but playing the game on a high refresh rate panel even 165 hertz you don't even need 240 hertz for the artifacts to not be noticeable and uh, capping it to 158 frames per second by using v-sync uh, which then 
in conjunction with reflex caps at 258 frames per second on this monitor i do not notice any artifacting cyberpunk is actually very good when it comes to multi-frame generation i rarely see any uh, artifacts and just playing the game it's really not noticeable now let me show you what happens when we actually enable uh, v-sync and uh, cap it to 158 frames per second let's what happens to our pc latency you can see in this spot it's around 45 to 50 milliseconds right all right so i capped it to 158 frames per second now via v-sync and currently we are getting around 50 to 55 milliseconds now obviously the input latency would be slightly higher because uh, our frame rate is lower right and uh, latency is, is tied to frame times and frame rate but just because we are seeing 56 milliseconds of pc latency that's not frame time latency right or frame times so you can't deduce that we are getting it's going to feel the same as 20 frames per second it's not now obviously there's very little benefit to exceeding your monitor's refresh rate when you do use frame generation because you do not get the latency reduction with a higher frame rate that you usually get without frame generation so typically you'd cap it to around uh, to your monitor's refresh rate by using v-sync and g-sync and reflex and then I mean the input latency would be slightly higher so let me just show you one other thing i'm going to enable 3x here with which is still enough to keep us locked at 158 frames per second yeah let's just see if our input latency actually decreases i do not there we go let me just reset the numbers so now we are back into the mid 40s again so basically I mean where we started off with 3x uh, frame generation anyway 3x and 4x and now with the 158 frames per second cap we are still seeing 40 to 50 milliseconds now other areas will be slightly uh, less demanding other areas might be slightly more demanding and that number would change a bit but this feels perfectly fine for somebody like me some other people might notice it straight away and hate it but for me personally i do enjoy it but we've got a few games to have a to look at here so let's go ahead and do just that all right so the next uh, game we're going to have a look at is star wars outlaws also because it does have official 3x and 4x frame generation implemented we'll have a look at uh, actually enforcing something via the nvidia app as well anyway that will be the next game so currently we're at 1440p i don't know why it says 60 hertz maybe it's because it is borderless window anyway it's 165 hertz panel this and uh, we've got dlss enabled no frame generation upscaler mode is set to fixed and we are using dlss quality and then if we have a look at our graphic settings here it's on the ultra preset and i do have uh, uh, rtx direct lighting on ultra as well all right and then just motion blur etc turned off so we are here in the first area purely because uh, let me just get <laughs> my settings right here uh, purely because we i got this game for free when i bought the 4080 super or 4070 ti super and i loaded it on my ubisoft account but i've got two ubisoft accounts and uh, i played it via the ubisoft connect subscription and when i activated i activated it on the wrong account and then i had to start from scratch unfortunately but now you can see we are getting around 70 -ish frames per second here at uh, 60 to 70 sorry and our pc latency is around 45 milliseconds now a lot of people would be fine playing like this 60 frames per second for star wars outlaws it's perfectly fine especially considering we are running full um ultra settings and uh, full bar tracing full ray tracing whatever right our text direct lighting so 40 42 50 milliseconds input latency there or sorry i keep on saying input latency it's pc latency right so we are seeing around 60 ish frames per second 60 to 70. so let's go ahead and then just enable i'm going to enable normal frame generation first that's not there so just normal uh, dlss 2x frame generation let's have a look at our uh, metrics here again once again doing everything real time so if i do make a mistake i do apologize so let's just uh, once again you can see that the frame time graph becomes pretty thick and i'm just trying to get the nvidia latency up right so still we went from 60 70 frames per second to around 120 frames per second our pc latency is less than what it was right and i've got no idea how this works because previously reflex was enabled in the settings maybe it does not apply when you don't use frame generation i'm not sure i actually i do think it does because when i do cap the frame rate uh with v-sync it does cap it at 158 so reflex 
seems to work, but for some reason, the input the latency reduction when using frame generation is more than what uh, it is without frame generation for some reason. Anyway, 120 frames per second and lower input latency or PC latency. That's actually a winner. I'm going to go a little bit quicker through this one. Let's go ahead and uh, apply 3x and then 4x. So let's just uh, go back into our game here. And uh, if we then press these buttons, there we go. Okay, so now we are getting 170, 180 frames per second. Our PC latency increased slightly, but it's still a little bit less than what it was without frame generation. And uh, as I said, I think it might be that reflex is not boosting as much when not using frame generation here. But uh, we are we're basically getting where we were without frame generation so not only did we see a pretty big boost to the visual fluidity or the motion fluidity we also did not see a latency penalty right so 170 ish frames per second there with the input latency or pc latency i keep on saying input latency um between 40 and 45 milliseconds once again and then if we go ahead and apply 4x let's just uh I changed my buttons and that's why I keep on pressing the wrong ones here. And even at 4x, we are seeing latency, PC latency between 35 and 40 milliseconds, right? It might go slightly higher, same as what we saw with Cyberpunk, where the, the highest end of the PC latency might be slightly higher, but like over there, it, uh, not sure if that was a stutter that caused it to go to 50, but everything here looks perfectly fine 200 frames per second motion uh, fluidity and uh, 40 milliseconds input latency so really no disadvantage to the input latency when enabling frame generation 3x or 4x uh, in star wars outlaws and the game looks perfectly fine even if we cap it to 158 frames per second it looks perfectly fine i did see in god of war ragnarok when i do cap it to 158 frames per second uh, the there's a slight halo ghosting effect around Kratos's head but I think it's because the game does not have official implementation and it's forced by the Nvidia app so it, uh, it probably will get fixed eventually all right last game we're going to have a look at is still wakes the deep and the reason why I want to test still wakes the deep is because this game by default has a frame rate cap of 144 frames per second and it also does not have 3x and 4x frame generation within the menu it only has a uh, frame generation on and off you also cannot enable reflex if you do not enable frame generation so what I did is I just enabled frame generation 4x in the nvidia app for this game so if we enable frame generation it'll be 4x but first we will do it without frame generation just showing you the settings here we've got dlss quality and then the rest are all set to epic and uh, i don't think i made any changes but anyway if we go into our game here i know it's not the most demanding area but um uh, let's just uh, move around a little bit you can see our pc latency is around 30 32 milliseconds right let's just get to a little bit of a more demanding area you can see we're not able to maintain 144 frames per second but the game is definitely capped to 144 we cannot go, go higher than that unless that you can actually <laughs> if you set a higher frame rate cap in something like msi afterburner then um, if, if you leave it uncapped it's capped to 144 but if you set something like 165 the game actually caps to 165 i don't know how that works anyway so pc latency here 33 milliseconds as i said it's probably not the most not the most demanding area but we're not having a look at absolute performance here we are having a look at the impact of uh, frame generation on input latency now the game does stutter a little bit um anyway so let's just go ahead uh, and enable frame generation here and as i said it will then enable the 4x mode because that is what i selected in the game or in the, the control panel in video control panel video app whatever and uh, now if we go back into our game let's just get the metrics up and if we reset then it doesn't matter if we reset them because the the lows can't be calculated properly we are still getting 144 frames per second but we are able to maintain that now and our pc latency is around 38 to 40 milliseconds right dropping down to 33 now as i said there's a little bit of stuttering in this game specifically in this uh, area so if you do see a spike in the pc latency it uh, it'll be probably related to a stutter 
Although I did see that if you if you start the game without frame generation enabled and you enable it in game, it starts to stutter a little bit more. So just uh, restart the game with uh, MFG or frame generation enabled and the stuttering will be a lot less. That's my experience anyway. All right, so there you have it. I just wanted to do a little bit more of a positive video on the whole RDX 50 series GPUs. Not because I don't think that the criticism is not valid right i think did i just use a double negative i think <laughs> um the the criticism is definitely valid right there's there's a lot of hope happening with the rdx 50 series that is definitely not ideal and uh, needs to be called out but i just wanted to show you that frame generation mfg is actually a lot better than what i personally expected myself as well uh, just based on YouTube videos that I saw. And that's why you can't really use YouTube videos to gauge performance when it comes to frame generation. Not not necessarily performance, but visual quality and uh, feel because it feels perfectly fine. And I'm capturing this at 60 frames per second with, a, with the capture card. And that means then that more than half of our frames are being dropped here at 144 frames per second, which then means you all, all you might see is the fra generated frames. You might not even see real frames or you'll just see bigger gaps between the frames. And that's why when you watch YouTube videos about fr multi-frame generation, the differences between the frames are actually much larger than what you would see when you are sitting at uh, in front of the PC playing yourself on a high refresh rate monitor. All right, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, we hope to see you in the next one.